What's up YouTube and those of you watching on Facebook, welcome back to the Keep On Trucking Studios. I'm Trucker Jim, but let's drop the character act. My first name is not Trucker. Trucker has been my job for the last five and a half years. Trucking is one of, if not the, most crucial industry in America. Most of my content has been trucking related. So we'll have to see how this video goes because it is not gonna be exactly trucking related. But just because this video is not gonna be trucking related doesn't mean you shouldn't keep watching. Actually, you should. I'd say it'd be fair to say that most people have found themselves off track a bit in 2020, which at the time of this recording, it's mid-August 2020. And I came across a, an interesting news article the other day, which kind of struck home to me. It was about suicide. But this article is from the New York Times, and it, it's not so much about record numbers of suicides. It's titled, Is a Pandemic Sparking Suicide? Which it goes in to talk about the contemplation of suicide, those suicidal thoughts, which I myself have experienced that this year and <laughs> at a capacity I've never known before. And that that concerned me. And, and I'm going to share some personal stories, but let's, let's get into the article. I'll put a link to this New York Times article in the description below, but it says the earliest signs of whether the pandemic is driving up suicides will likely emerge among those who have a history of managing persistent waves of self-destructive distress. Many of these people who number in millions worldwide go through each day compulsively tuned into the world's casual cruelties. Its suspicious glances and rude remarks are prone to isolate themselves at times, contemplating a final exit plan. That's how I am, said Josh, 35, a college instructor in North Carolina who has been consumed in the past with thoughts of suicide. I see all the bad, the suffering. I have a tendency to crawl into a hole. Now with the COVID threat, we're being told to isolate and stay away from others. It's like, oh, I was right all along. The world is crazy. And why, yes, I think the world is crazy, people. Let's just take a look at some of the events so far in 2020. We started out in January with, let's see, Australia being on fire. Australian wildfires. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to this in the description below, but it says here, and there's a video, nearly 500 million animals feared dead in Australia. The impeachment of Donald Trump. Remember that? All the Democrats voted to impeach Trump, yeah, but he was acquitted, so he's still the president. But tensions in Iran, the death of Kobe Bryant. We're coming on the air with breaking news, very sad news to tell the sports world. The LA Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. The chopper reportedly went down just before 10 a.m. local time. Iowa caucus, I don't remember all the details of that, but I think it had something to do with voting manipulation. Well, we're in an election year still, and there's a, the, well, we haven't get, Let's keep going. The Harvey Weinstein conviction, which that whole story had started a, a couple of years prior, but he's in prison. He was convicted. And then COVID-19. We passed a grim milestone today. More than 50,000 Americans have now died from this virus. And the number is likely much higher due to insufficient testing. At this rate, in just a few days, more Americans will have died from coronavirus over a span of roughly nine weeks than died in the Vietnam War over a span of 12 years. And in the face of the economic calamity that's also hit our country, some states have begun implementing plans to reopen. But as you can see on your screen, the curve of confirmed new cases and new deaths is yet to show a consistent decline in this country. It's a plateau. More than 2,600 people died yesterday alone. Ooh, here's a big one the death of George Floyd. Because 
But the history of race in America is not the subject of this video, okay? If you would like for me to make one about that, let me know in the comments below, and maybe that will be a future video. But in this one, I'm going to talk about me now and my 2020 experience. You know, I love a good story. Everyone does. I'm reading a book now called Save the Cat. It's supposed to be the last book you'll ever need to read on screenwriting because I, I feel I have some stories in me that want to be told. But there's a story going on that I need to start writing the way I want it to play out. But here's what's played out so far. January 2020, I'm pumped, I'm excited. I'm working on putting this studio together. I'm driving local, not making big bucks, but I, I have an awesome schedule. I have a plan to get into the film industry, which is what I've always wanted to do. 2020 was going to be a year of opportunity, and the calendar was just set up perfectly with holidays and everything. My birthday's on a Saturday which is actually a week from the time of this recording. But anyway, I was working local. I was working out three times a week, doing my kickboxing, starting to work on, well, starting to build up the confidence to do stand-up comedy. And I attended two open mics. None of my friends saw any of these sessions, and they weren't good, but I did it. I got on stage for about five minutes, got a few laughs. Had a little time on stage with a mic in my hand. Cool experience. But it was only the beginning. Stand-up comedy is one of those things you gotta keep doing and doing and doing and doing it. And also, I was in the early stages of learning to actually develop material and understanding jokes, hooks, setups, all of those type of things. It's January. Now, to back up a bit, 2019, it could have ended a little better. I had an elbow surgery in October that it took longer than I expected to recover. It hurt. The media director position at GMP, well, it went away. GMP got acquired by a larger company called NFI that I had never heard of at the time. My ex-wife got really mad at me because I did not send her any money during the month of October. But I had a vision. I was working on a plan to live my dream life. So then February came. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl. I lost a bet. The very next day I had child support court and when I walked out of there I had been court ordered to pay $1,330 a month in child support. Now just to give a little context these three were not my biological children. They started out as foster children, but then me and my wife separated and I became a truck driver. She was in school. There were three kids. For the longest time, there was like no money until we finished our foster classes, which I had to come off the road on home time to do mine. She'd finished hers, but they wouldn't start the money until I'd finished mine, so I did. And then about a year later, we were still separated. I signed some adoption papers so their names could be changed and they couldn't visit their biological family anymore. Because I was told that's what needed to happen for safety reasons. I'm not going to go into any more detail about this because this subject is... Well, it's one, it's one that I'm... I'm I'm torn in multiple directions on, on how I feel about it. It's, it's complicated. And then that same month, my roommate, um, former girlfriend, some of you guys may know her, um, she was admitted to a mental institution, was having a lot of suicidal thoughts herself and, you know, a lot of things not going right in, in her life. But 
when she does get out, she does feel better and she is a lesbian because she brought a girlfriend from the mental institution home. And they're still together today, happy, um, happy for them. I'll come back to that. Because we're still in March. And in March, everyone in the world knows about the coronavirus, COVID-19. Killer virus coming out of China. It's in Italy, it's in Europe, it's in the U.S. The country begins to shut down. The NBA season is postponed. Well, towards the end of March, keep in mind, I'm now court ordered to pay an extra $1,330 a month in child support. So I accept an opportunity to go out of town to help out with a dedicated account for Aldi grocery stores. There's some videos of it, some of you may have seen, but I spent five weeks up there. It was an awesome experience, probably the highlight of my year so far. But as April and May rolled on, there's just more negative media, bashing of the president, coronavirus number scares, Lockdown, pandemic, isolation, quarantine, and most of this time, I was spending alone. I was not having interactions with very many people. Now, I found myself being a little jealous of what I was seeing on TV as far as all the people that were at home, quarantined, getting paid, and being at home with their families. Kids are at home, can't go to school. You're at home, can't go and work. But companies and the government's taking care of people. Unemployed people are getting an extra $600 a, a week. Manufacturing people are still getting paid the majority of their pay to stay at home, but they're in quarantine, watching Netflix, and I don't know, because I couldn't relate with them. I was working and hustling like I hadn't in a while and hustling daily. But George Floyd wasn't the only one that died that day. America as we knew it died that day. Black Lives Matter was springboarded into every news story other than the coronavirus. White shame became a definite thing. But that's not what this video is about. But I myself was definitely affected internally by seeing that constantly. But the protesting and the riots. But let's move on in to June because in June, I was probably at my rock bottom. I hope it was my rock bottom. I was feeling pretty, 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 pretty. I was feeling pretty blue. Actually, darker than blue. With the encouragement of the girls I was living with at the time, I admitted myself to the Carolina Center for Behavioral Health. I was out of work for a couple of weeks, but that's not what this video is about. If y'all would like a more in-depth look into my experience at Carolina Center of Behavioral Health, the exploration of my mental health, my bipolar diagnosis, and any of that, let me know in the comments below and maybe we'll visit that in a future video. When I got out and checked the mail, there was a late notice from our landlord in the mailbox. And that didn't sound right because, well, I paid my half uh, of the rent and my roommate, which found this house and everything, this is not an attack piece. I just need to get some things out so I can move on because I, I kind of feel stuck in the mud mentally and a big contributing, well, there was already things happening, but another thing in addition to that is when I got home from being in the mental institution, there was a late notice for my, my residence here. The letter said that the April month of rent hadn't been paid and the June month of rent hadn't been paid. This was a surprise at me at the time. I was sweating. Am I going to have my half of July? This kind of freaked me out a bit, guys, and I could have reacted better than I did. I yelled a bit. I cussed a bit. I was... I was not nice guy Jim. 
I did find another roommate, but they moved out today. So it's just me again in this big four bedroom house. I'm paid up till September. It's mid-August. So the house is pretty empty. The coolest spot you're looking at is to keep on trucking studio, people. But the rest of the house is pretty empty except for a couch and a TV and a coffee table downstairs. Now here's the last bad thing I'm gonna mention. I hope I hadn't negged any of you guys out. This is not a competition, but if you would like to leave below like some of the horrible things as part of your 2020, or what would be even better is how you've overcome and made 2020 work for you. Because the billionaire companies, that's exactly what they're doing, and they're going to be buying up a lot of businesses and land that's falling off the map in 2020. But my cloud does have a silver lining. It's called opportunity. Oh, did I mention gum disease? Yeah, I got that too. My mouth has been bothering me. Well, no duh, Trucker Jim. The reason is I have periodontis. Y'all ever heard of gingivitis? Well, periodontis is much worse. And having your teeth pulled out and losing your teeth and having diseased gums, well, that's just part of the problem that this will cause if it's left untreated. It makes your body all full of bacteria and it's a cesspool for cancer to grow and heart disease and all other kind of problems. But this video is not about gum disease either guys. What it's about is that silver lining in the cloud. I know we're all going through things right now. But we have to believe there is a silver lining in our dark clouds. But guys, thanks for watching. This video's already gone on longer than I intended it to. So I'm going to keep it short, wrap it up. If you like these type of subjects, I know we didn't talk about back in the trailer or how to use a Qualcomm or anything like that. But there's already content out there like that on YouTube, guys. But there's always a reason to put your dreams off to tomorrow. There's always a reason something won't work out. <sighs> I'm hovering above rock bottom if I'm, if I'm not there. There's a lot of things that are not going right right now. And, and look at me, YouTube. I am the absolute reason for every problem that's in my life. I either allowed it to happen or invited it into me. And I accept personal responsibility. I do not have all the details of how I'm going to get it, but I have life. Many people don't anymore. That we're here at the beginning of 2020. We can make it through 2020. I'm going to make it through 2020. And dadgummit, I will not be a truck driver at the end of 2020. It's time to evolve. There's other things I know I'm better at that can provide more value to the world. But thanks everyone for watching. Let's interact in the comments below. That'll uh, help me feel a little better and you know we can do some more content like this because this is kind of easy for me because it's right here in the Keep On Trucking Studios. And I kind of mentioned it before. This is a big house and it's just Boone and I here. Anybody need a place to stay? I need a roommate by September. My contact information is below, but I'll see you all in the next video. But until then, please be safe out there and keep on trucking.